internal energy. So let's talk more about the internal energy. We've already discussed the internal energy possessed by what? Any system. So internal energy is a property of what? A system that reflects the energy of the molecules of what? The system. We talked about it. We said the energy possessed by what? The molecules, the molecular activity that forms what? The internal what? Energy, as we are saying, in internal energy. Very simple. Energy possessed by what? The molecules in a system, of a system. It is a property of what? Mass, which is completely defined by the state of the system. It's a property of what? Mass, because it depends on what? The number of what? The molecules. Because let's say this has six molecules, and each molecule has what? An energy of what? Two kilojoule, meaning we are going to have what? 12 what? kilojoule of energy possessed by the system, assuming no energy is what? Lost. If this same system contains what? 10 molecules or the mass, and we have each of them possessing 2 kilojoule of energy. Assuming no energy is lost, we are going to have what? 20 kilojoule of what? Energy, meaning the internal energy is what? A property of mass. The law of conservation of energy, as indicated earlier, states that energy can neither be created nor what? Destroyed. Because we know that energy cannot be created nor what? Destroyed. This internal energy can be used or transferred to what? Another state of energy for our use. Thus, the internal energy of a system can change only when energy crosses a boundary of the system. Pay attention here. When heat or work interacts with the system, then energy can what? Move in or out of the system. Hence, or here, U is used to represent the internal energy per unit mass. We've already talked about it. U, capital U, is what the internal energy, the total internal energy. And we use small u to represent the specific internal what, energy or the energy per unit mass. What we are trying to say in this point is that if this system is having 12 kilojoule of energy, this energy can change only when energy crosses the boundary in or some energy moves into the system through the boundary. And pay attention, our analysis is going to be based on this idea. Anytime you have what a system possessing a form of energy, the energy can reduce or change only if energy crosses the boundary. Because if energy is not moving in or what out, then it will remain what constant. And energy moves in or out of a system in our analysis only in a form of heat and in a form of what? Work. Heat energy transfer. Energy can cross the boundary of a closed system in two distinct forms. Only heat and work are shown. So this diagram is what? A closed system. Pay attention because it is going to help us in our analysis when we are solving questions. This is a closed system and we know that a system is anything under study. We are studying this and we know what? A boundary. So this is the system boundary. It separates the system from its what surroundings. So this is the surround. Anything outside the system is what? Surrounding. And what we are saying is that for a closed system, mass is what? Constant. We call it closed system because mass is what? Constant. It does not change with time because there is no space for the mass to what? Go out. But the amount of energy, so the energy inside this closed system, can change. The energy can change. Yes, we have situations where a closed system does not interchange any energy with its surrounding. That's why we call it what? Isolated what? System. Isolated. But if we are not dealing with isolated systems and we are just dealing with closed systems, 
let's put it in mind that the energy inside the system can change but the only forms at which the energy can change is through heat and what work heat and work so when i have a closed system heat can enter that's in into the system to increase its what it increase its energy the same way heat can what come out from the system to what to decrease the energy are you paying attention to so decrease energy so that's the rule of heat when i leave my system is either heat is what going inside the system to increase the energy or coming out to decrease the energy apart from heat work can also what cause an increase or decrease in what the energy are we good work can be inside work can be done on the system and work out is work done by the system let's take it again work is also a form through which our energy can what be loose or gain if work is entering the system meaning work is being done if it is in then work is done on the system we do some form of work on the system but if work is coming out meaning the system is going to work for us so work is now done by the system assuming i'm using this system to what i'm co i'm connecting it to maybe a shaft to rotate some other forms of what mechanical stuffs then this system is going to work do work and as a result the energy content here is going to what be reduced that's work done by the system but if i am heating or i am doing a work on the system i'm going to what increase the energy are we good so these are the two main forms through which energy can cross the boundary apart from heat apart from work there's not any other thing that will make energy cross what the boundary of any closed what system when the system and the surrounding fluid are the same we have the same temperature no heat is transferred in this case the system and the surrounding are said to be what thermal equilibrium so i have my system now the heat i have 10 kilojoule of heat inside the system and the surrounding is also 10 what kilojoule now these are they are in what thermal equilibrium they are in equilibrium remember equilibrium so this means there's no going to be any heat exchange between the system and its surrounding why because they have what thermal equilibrium the term adiabatic is used to designate a system in which no heat crosses the system boundaries so a situation where there is equilibrium and no heat movement in or out the system the system is said to be what adiabatic adiabatic system so in an analysis where i say an adiabatic system meaning k which is what heat s changes was zero there's no heat in there's no what heat out or the rate of heat in is equal to the rate of what heat out and the system is called adiabatic system are we good a process is said to be adiabatic if either the system is well insulated so that only negligible amount of heat can pass through the boundary as one or both the system and the surrounding are at the same temperature and there's no driving force or temperature difference for heat transfer this grammar is very simple so we are saying we can call a system as adiabatic system based on two conditions so one on a condition that I told you that if energy and what let's say if energy and or heat energy nothing is crossing the boundary 
heat energy and mass. If a system is closed, meaning the mass is not coming out, for that we, we know and it is established. But a situation where the heat energy is also not coming at, out at all, then that system is called what? Isolated. Isolated what? System. There's no exchange of both mass and heat energy. And we are saying that adiabatic is established when a system is insulated so that only negligible, but in re reality, we don't have a hundred percent what isolated system. By all means, there will be some small amount of what heat loss, but it's what negligible. Are we good? So, what this statement is trying to tell us is that we can also get adiabatic systems where negligible amount of heat are what coming out through the boundary. Or an isolated system is also called what? Adiabatic system because we assumed no heat transfer is what? And mass transfer is what? Occurring. But in real sense, there should be some small amount which is negligible, meaning we can forget about it. But with time, it will be what? Somehow great. So that's one condition. And the second condition is. Both the system and the surrounding are at the same temperature as explained earlier. If the temperature difference is what? The same. So, meaning the heat outside will be equal to the heat what? Inside. Meaning there is not going to be any heat transfer. With that, the system is also said to be what? Adiabatic. The transfer of heat into a system is frequently referred to as heat addition and the transfer of heat out of a system is also called heat what? Rejection. Heat energy flow into the system from the surrounding is said to be positive and negative vice versa. So consider this system. So if I have any system, so this is my system. And if I'm adding heat, for example, I apply heat to the container, that situation, I am what adding heat, so it is heat addition. Very simple. And if the heat content inside the system is so great that it has to what, remove some, then I'm going to get heat out, which will be called heat rejection. Rejection. Are we good? And in our analysis, when we get to calculations, anytime heat is added, we consider it to be what? Positive. Pay attention. And if we add heat to any system, that heat will be positive. And if we, or heat is rejected, that heat is what? Negative. Are we good? We are going to consider all this. Heat transfer per unit mass of a system is denoted by the expression. This small Q is equal to that on that. Remember, the capital Q is the heat what? In a system or the heat content within a system. So if I divide it by the mass, meaning I'm getting the heat transferred per what? Mass. Are we good? Remember, in thermodynamics, if I divide a property by mass, I'm going to get the specific of what? That property, meaning per mass, per each what mass of the property. Are we good? So if I want to know the heat content by an amount of what mass or per unit mass, then I'll divide the total amount of heat by the mass and I'm getting what that. And those specific values are always what in what lowercase letters. And the total or the quantity is in what upper case what letters and work heat and work now we know that heat and work can cross boundary of what any system it is either in or out as heat it is either in or out as work so how do we differentiate between these two things 
So let's look at some differences between them. A quantity that is transferred to or from a system during an interaction is not a property. Since the amount of such quantity depends on more than just the state of the system. Remember, heat and work, they are not properties of what? A system. So if we are finding the properties of this system, heat and what? Work are not properties because they are transferred to and from a system. That's our reason. Are we good? Heat and work are energy transfer mechanism between a system and its surroundings. And there are many similarities between them. Among these include, so now let's look at the similarities between work and what? Heat. One, both heat and work are recognized at the boundaries of a system as they cross the boundary. So we can call them as what? Boundary phenomena. Are we good? So they only occurs because they cross the boundary of what? The system. They are recognized at the boundary of the system. Are we good? System possesses energy, but not heat and work. This system contains or possesses what? Energy inside. But the system does not possess what? Heat or does not possess work. Are we good? It possesses energy as its property, but does not possess work and heat, which is very simple. Both are associated with what? A process, not a state. Unlike properties, heat or work has no what? Meaning at a state. For example, we talked about the state postulate, which shows that we can find the state of what? Any system by knowing two what? Independent, two independent what? Properties. Are we good? Here, we cannot determine the state of any system by knowing work and heat. They are not what properties are we good. So the state of a system cannot be determined by heat and work. For example, if I want to know if the system is in the superheated, you understand what we mean by superheated as we go on. If I want to know if the system is superheated, I cannot use work and heat to determine that because they are not what properties, but other what properties like temperature and pressure can help me determine what the property of the system. That's what we are talking about. So heat and work both are associated with what the process, but not what a state. Both are path functions. That's their magnitude depend on the path followed during what a process as well as what the end state. They are what path function. I'll draw the graph of what a path taken by a system and we will see how we can use that to relate to work and heat. It's very simple. 